Hey everybody, Derek here. I'm here to bring you my review for the mid-season finale of The Walking Dead Season 6, which was start to finish. I'm just going to warn you right now, if you are not caught up with the series, if you do not want to know anything that happened at all in this episode, exit the video now and come back later, because otherwise you are going to be majorly spoiled. Okay. My overall impression of the episode was I thought it was very good. Um, it was very entertaining, uh, definitely very suspenseful throughout. I uh, would have preferred to see a little bit more with the ending. I kind of wish the ending would have seen the conclusion of um, Rick's plan, which if you're a comic book follower, you know what happens in the comics. Would have liked to have seen that played out. But I think that however it plays out, when we come back in February, I think it's just going to be like one of the best openings to an episode you're ever going to see. The opening. So it really makes me wonder what the ending of the mid-season premiere will be if it's that intense and insane as uh, the beginning will probably be. So, as we know, um, what happened in this episode was the walkers broke through the walls. Um, you know, that tower came down, crushed the wall, and we saw the walkers invade. And, of course, everybody's saying, well, we got to get the heck out of here because uh, otherwise we're going to get eaten. Uh, I mean, there were just so many walkers. And we see people splitting off in different directions. We see uh, Maggie climb onto the top of a perch, uh, so she's safe. We have Eugene, who was hiding, and he was actually the voice on the walkie-talkie um, that Daryl was talking on back in Always Accountable. And we saw that Eugene said help. Um, you know, he was hiding, you know, with all the walkers coming through, and he almost got, you know, bitten. But... Tara and Rosita came to his rescue, and the three of them took shelter inside of a garage. And then we have Rick, who, you know, was going all uh, cowboy, if you will. You know, he had his uh, Colt Python out. He was shooting a bunch of walkers, making sure people were, you know, getting away, staying safe. And um, during this, Deanna actually runs over and starts to help him, you know, like, she starts to shoot her gun as well, and tells Rick, like, Rick, we need to get, you know, inside of a house and get to shelter. She, unfortunately, ends up falling on a saw um, that was exposed, and she cuts herself, um, and the walkers almost get her, you know, but then Rick comes, and, you know, they're, they're able to get her, you know, to safety as well, and then Rick Michonne Gabriel and then we also had Carl, Judith, Ron, Sam, Jesse, and Deanna were all in the same house, which I believe was the Andersons' house. So they all take shelter inside of Jesse's house. And Jesse, of course, came out and shot some of the walkers uh, as well. And then we also have Carol and Morgan and Denise ending up in the cell uh, and in the same house as the wolf. Uh, so, you know, people are scattered all over in this episode, and really, uh, the episode focuses on those two factions, you know, with a little uh, spot for Eugene, Rosita, and Tara, as well as a little bit from Glenn and uh, Enid. You know, Glenn and Enid are basically jumping into a plan at this point uh, to try to see what they can do to help, so that's pretty much, they were in the show for like two, two scenes, and that's it. So, to talk about Morgan and Carol, I'm going to talk about that first. Um, you know, the two of them are taking shelter in the upstairs portion of the house, so Carol doesn't yet know that the wolf is down below. The wolf is down below with Denise, so those two uh, pairs are separated in and of themselves, but Carol has her suspicions. And we've seen that, you know, Carol really was very, you know, not trusting of Morgan. And she expresses this, you know, she says that I trust some people more than others, but I trust you least. But I don't think you're a liar. So the trust is really about um, would Morgan be able to help her survive, I think, rather than, you know, I think Morgan's a liar or something, you know. So you saw the difference there. But Carol ends up feigning a concussion because she ended up falling down while they were going towards the uh, the house. And, um, you know, <clears throat> so she's feigning a concussion. 
down below, Denise is talking with the wolf. And, you know, the wolf states that, you know, his group, the wolves, were coming in there to, to free them, and then they were going to use whatever was left, and that the wolf actually cut his side on a bumper of a car. The way that the wolf was talking, you know, we've kind of been trying to figure out what exactly were, you know, the wolves, what were their purpose. I think they really were this, you know, end of the world cult, if you will. I really think that that was, you know, the, the underlying factors with them. You know, because he refers to people as saying, like, well, you're not supposed to be here. You know, this this place isn't for you. You know, you keep hearing him saying, you know, and the wolves were saying various different things like that throughout the season when we saw them. And one of the things that the wolf says to Denise is, I've done my part. The world will take care of the rest. It won't change. And I think that really what that was about was just, letting everybody know what the wolves really were. And again, I really think that they were just this this cult that, you know, really believed that this was the end of the world and, you know, they were going to potentially help, you know, to end the world. His part, you know, was, well, I'm going to take out this, you know, many group of people. Somebody else, you know, if some of his wolves are still alive, then they're going to they're go about doing the rest. So I really think that that was really what the wolves purpose were just based on the language and the conversation uh, that Denise was having with the wolf in the episode. Now, <clears throat> of course, his cut is very, very infected. I mean, there was literally, you know, like pus coming out of it. You know, it's, it's really in a bad shape at this point. And as Denise is treating the wolf's wound, um, you know, Carol sneaks away. Again, she was faking the concussion because she wants to, you know, go downstairs and investigate, you know, what exactly is Morgan doing here? And I think that she really believed that Morgan had a prisoner. Um, and I, and she turned out to be correct, of course. And, you know, Carol tells Denise to get out of the way because she's going to kill the wolf. Um, but Morgan comes down, you know, they wanted, you know, to, he wanted to wait until after they took care of the Walker problem to take care of the differences between the two of them, but obviously that can't happen now. And we have two sides. You know, again, many of us realize that Carol and Morgan are on two opposite spectrums. You have Carol who, you know, wants to kill any threat that she thinks will be a, you know, a threat to her or her group. And you have Morgan who believes that all life is precious, we shouldn't kill, and we need to be better than these people, because you see them arguing these ideals with each other. You know, Carol states that, look, it's people like the wolf that have made me kill and made other people, that made other people kill, and she kind of, you know, equates it to, look, we are better people than they are, which, I mean, if you're judging by apocalypse standards, you know, um, in a sense, I would, I would agree with that, you know, I mean, at least, Rick's group is not going around killing other groups, you know, that are just merciless and have nothing, uh, you know, no threat to them. You know, it's not like they were the people back in season four when the governor saw that that camp was there and then people came and attacked the camp, killed everybody. That's not Rick's group. So, you know, and of course they're not cannibalizing people like the hunters were. So really by, you know, apocalypse standards, I can agree with that. But Morgan notes, well, we're not really much better than them if if we kill. You know, Morgan believing that, look, it doesn't matter what reason you're killing somebody, the fact that you're killing makes you no better than, you know, they are. That's how Morgan kind of looks at it. And then Carol, I mean, really takes it to the next level and threatens to kill Morgan in order to kill the wolf because she doesn't want anybody else to die. and that means that if she has to kill somebody to get through to the threat, she will, which is really a major step with her. Um, you know, we've seen Carol kill people before, you know, killing Karen and David to stop the, you know, the virus from spreading to other people. You know, we've seen her do things like this, but never, you know, killing somebody who really wasn't doing anything per se wrong or, yeah, I mean, maybe maybe he's stepping in the way and not, you know, letting her kill the wolf, but, you know, you realize that Morgan is not going to kill her, and Carol should realize this, but she's willing to kill Morgan to get to 
the wolf. And it turns out that the two do fight. Um, because Morgan won't let her. You know, Morgan has the philosophy of, look, I'm not going to let him kill you. And you're, I'm, you know, I'm not going to let you kill the wolf. And, you know, I'm not going to let you kill anybody. Simple as that. And, you know, Morgan ends up overpowering Carol, throws her on the ground, knocks her out. And, um, the wolf then in turn knocks Morgan out. Uh, you know, and basically ends up taking Denise hostage. And it turns out that Eugene, Tara, and Rosita, the garage that they were in, it turns out that was connected to the house. So they, you know, Eugene picked the lock and they got in, but it was only in time to see, you know, the wolf with Denise as a hostage. So, um, you know, the wolf makes them drop their weapons and, you know, he basically leaves with Denise. You know, he walks out um, into the walker herd. Now, what that's going to mean, I don't know. You know, I don't know where he's taking her. I don't know if that's going to end, you know, badly. I mean, there's a bunch of walkers out there, and he's going out there exposed. Walkers don't discriminate. They, if you're alive, you know, no matter whether you're good or bad, they're going to eat you. So I don't know how that's going to conclude, but it definitely left us off with a cliffhanger there. Plus, what are Carol and Morgan going to do once they wake up, you know? That'll be interesting as well, and there's I think there's going to be a lot of fallout from that. And you can, again, see that... Carol has some good points, and Morgan has some good points as well. And I'll discuss those in a later, more in-depth analysis uh, for Carol and Morgan. Again, the other thing that was going on in this episode was, you know, Rick's group uh, inside Jesse's house. Well, they're treating Denise's wounds, and they find out that, unfortunately, when those walkers were on her, they bit her. So Denise was, I'm sorry, Deanna, excuse me, Denise Deanna, my apologies. Uh, Deanna um, was bitten on the side, so it's not like it can be amputated, you know, the body part can't be amputated, so she's, um, unfortunately going to die, and, you know, Michonne actually, you know, sits with her for a while, and, you know, credits Deanna for, you know, building this great community, and Deanna's very happy with the way that she's lived, she's dying, you know, without regrets, really, and, Michonne tells Deanna, you know, she wants Alexandria to work. But Deanna asks Michonne, well, do you know how you want it to work? Like, what do you want? And Michonne says, I don't know. And Deanna says, well, you need to know. And that, I, I like the way that she and Michonne had this talk because it turns out that, you know, they had a discussion about the, the Latin that was written on the, the crop plans that Deanna wrote, and what it means is, um, someday this pain will be useful to you. And, you know, I think that it makes a lot of sense, you know, when you, when you really look at it, because, you know, someday going through all of the things that you, that you've gone through will be useful to you potentially later on, you know, if these people want to make this world just like it was before or as close to as you can get it going through this pain now may help you come out on the other side recognizing what you want and what you're willing to do for it. So there's a lot that can be discussed from that. But, you know, it really poses that question to Michonne, you know, does what does she want from Alexandria? And I think that it's going to influence Michonne later on as she's trying to really figure out what she wants to do with her life in this community and what she wants to make out of the community. So, other things that are going on, uh, Carl and Ron have a big fight. Um, you know, Ron ends up, you know, going into the, the garage of their house, you know, and is upset, you know, believes that they're all going to die, it's all hopeless. And, you know, Carl tells Ron, like, look, my dad's going to figure everything out, it's going to be okay. And you see the two of them battling, you know, their feelings, you know. <clears throat> uh, Ron says, well, you know, your dad's a killer, Carl. You know, he's a jerk and he's a killer. And, you know, Carl says, well, Pete was too. Um, and Carl wants to, you know, talk with Ron. He wants to work through, um, you know, the different feelings that they're obviously feeling. Obviously, both of their families were affected by this in different ways. Um, but Ron ends up locking the door. I think that at this point, now that he realizes in his mind that everything is hopeless, then he has nothing to lose trying to kill Carl, which is exactly what he tries to do. Um, he tries to shoot Carl. The two of them fight. 
they break open the window part of the garage door, and the walkers end up, you know, hearing all the sound, hearing the scuffle. Rick runs down, um, you know, along with Jesse and Michonne to, you know, see what's going on, and the walkers break into the garage. So they're able to get everybody out of there, and they block the entrance to the garage. And, you know, Carl actually covers for Ron. You know, he doesn't tell anybody, yeah, Ron just tried to kill me. No, he says, no, we were, you know, we were going over and, you know, looking the place over, and the, the walkers saw us, and we were fighting them. So he covers for Ron. And, um, you know, he ends up taking Ron to another room, holds a gun on him, and Carl says, give me your gun. You know, you're not going to have that. And Carl basically, you know, sets the record straight with him. You know, he says, look, I get it. You know, my dad killed your dad, and obviously that's going to make you mad, and I can understand that, but you need to get over your, you know, crap and, you know, realize your dad was a jerk. Your dad abused you, and your dad killed Reg and was, you know, volatile and anger, angry. So, you know, what Ron's going to do with this um, is definitely something to see in the next episode. You know, will he, uh, you know, take Carl's words to heart and potentially become a little more of a better person? Or is he just going to, you know, act through on his plan? We'll find out. Uh, Rick goes and talks with Deanna as well. And Deanna asks Rick to look out for Spencer, you know, like he was one of, you know, his group. And, you know, Rick, Rick is, you know, hesitant about that. He goes, well, you know, we haven't really had the opportunity to make this community, um, you know, totally unified. And we realize that, you know, with everything going on, there really hasn't been this meeting of the minds to determine what is best for Alexandria. It's really been more about dealing with this Walker problem rather than dealing with the differences that both groups have. But Deanna says, no, you need to look at it as everybody is your people because Rick, they are your people now. She states, you know, earlier in the episode when Deanna ran over to help Rick, she says, I didn't do that because I liked you. I did it because you're one of us. And that's the right answer. And it's really a good point. Moving forward, getting everything, you know, going and making this community stronger and rebuilding it is only going to work if Everybody is unified and working together. I hope those words really hit on, you know, Rick's emotions a little bit and will make him, you know, become a little bit of a, you know, conscientious person about how everybody is important to the community. Um, at this point of the episode, the walkers are breaking through. Um, they've broken in on the doors. At this point, the only thing that is keeping them from getting to Rick's group is a couch that's put on the stairwell. And Rick and Michonne end up killing a walker, and they take them upstairs, and they start to gut the walker's bodies. And, you know, they're going to use the plan that they used back in Atlanta. Um, Rick tells everybody, look, we're going to have to take the walker guts, put them on ourselves, so that way we can get through the walker herd. Um, and they start to go about this plan. Sam comes out and finally starts to, you know, see what's going on. Um, earlier in the episode at the very beginning, Sam was actually, you know, he's still in his room. He was, uh, listening to music and he was coloring a picture and what he was coloring was himself tied to a tree and monsters surrounding him. So you really see that Carol's words really have scared him and affected him rather than made him, you know, stronger as a person. And I'll analyze that as well in another video because there's really a lot of uh, things that we can take from this episode and moving forward with some of these characters, what they might try to do. Of course, you know, when the time comes, Sam is very scared. Um, and Jesse tells him, you know, he needs to be brave. He needs to, uh, you know, pretend that he's, you know, a brave person so that they can live. Um, and we also have Gabriel telling Rick that he won't, you know, run away. He's going to stay with them no matter what. Um, you know, really seeing Rick now giving Gabriel a chance uh, to redeem himself a little bit, that Rick actually recognizes his presence um, and tells him that he does believe in him. So hopefully that's going to start to mend the fences, and maybe Gabriel may continue to do things into the next episode. Um, and the way that the episode ends um, is they go out, 
they start to walk through the herd. Everything's working out okay. They get outside the house. They're walking through the walker herd. And we hear Sam saying, Mom, Mom, Mom. And he starts to say it louder and louder. Um, and then it cuts. So we have no idea what happens. You know, we actually hear the walker, you know, the walkers actually uh, start to, you know, moan and groan a little bit louder. So maybe that means that they did hear this. And maybe, you know, Rick's uh, journey through the walker herd along with everybody else may not be uh, as good. And we also saw Deanna, um, you know, basically go out in a blaze of glory. She uh, ended up you know, shooting at some of the walkers that invaded the house, um, and then just screamed as she, as she ran out of bullets. So I'm going to presume she was eaten. Um, but she at least, you know, went out fighting, which I think is really within the spirit of this character. And I think that her conclusion on the show, uh, was done very well. Now there's one last thing that happened. There was a two minute promo that occurred during the Into the Badlands episode. And we saw that Daryl, Sasha, and Abraham were on their way back. They get stopped on the road by a bunch of people on motorcycles. They order them to get out of the, of the truck. Uh, and they basically state all of your property, anything, you know, anything that was in there, uh, anything you have, it belongs to Negan now. Whoa! <laughs> Uh, clearly, uh, there is somebody named Negan coming to the show, and if you are a comic book fan, then you know who we're talking about, and you know what kind of exciting things are coming. So, I'll be interested to see what happens, and I'm, I'm really anxious for February. It's kind of a shame we have to wait, but hey, I think it's worth it. I can't wait for February to come, and I think it's going to be absolutely amazing. So with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. I want to thank all of you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, don't be afraid to leave them. Feel free to subscribe. I do have more videos coming. And if you have any suggestions for future videos that you would like to see, don't be afraid to suggest them. Have a wonderful evening, and thank you very much for watching.